Hi everyone, I'm Mikey. And I'm Pac Jeff. Welcome to Fastcast. Probably the only uh, Sonic related podcast on the internet. Definitely the only one. We're not going to check. Definitely the only one. We're not going to check it. We right. advise that you don't either. <laughs> what what kind of dorks would actually like make a Sonic the Hedgehog podcast? I know, right? Right? <laughs> Sonic's stupid. Well, Sonic is because so Sonic's stupid. stupid. So stupid. It's stupid. Anyway, let's talk about how much nope. we love Sonic. Well, exactly. <laughs> I was going to reference the IG. I was going to reference the IGN video, but let's move on with the show, of course. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Hello, this is Fastcast. Uh I am Pac Jeff, one of your hosts, your other host, this amazing son of a bitch with me. Mikey, thank yes. you. Yeah. Uh, as always for keeping me on the show. Yeah, well, you're the only person I know who will talk about Sonic the Hedgehog at length with me, so <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is why we made this podcast after all. Well, yeah, because we've been Discord calls with friends and some and it would be like three o'clock in the morning and then i'm like ah, i gotta get to bed and then all of a sudden jeff just brings up all oh, right mikey you played sonic forces right and then i go into a long ass rant about how much i fucking hate that game right and just sonic in general and yeah. you know everybody just completely silent, silent. yeah <laughs> we should probably we should probably find a different outlet for this kind of talk and here it is yeah yeah so um Wonderful Do you uh, wanna... artwork by Mitchell Owens. Uh, oh, check out his totally. his his socials in the description below, as well as Mikey's socials and mine as well. Uh, watch Mikey's mm-hmm. short films, by the way; they're pretty great. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate that. So the nature of the show is that we are going to go through every Sonic game in order, dedicate each podcast to, depending on the how would you say into the or you know let's say for this episode it's just sonic one because we feel as though that it is important enough to have its own its own episode however when we go and you know with most of the mainline games you know that's how it'll work out but then uh, once we get onto the like stuff like the portables or the like the advanced games or the rush games or some of the spinoffs we'll kind of clump them all together since our thoughts are more minimal or samey but as for now you're hearing sonic one sonic the hedgehog one do you really want like like be honest listening to this podcast do you really want another explanation about the history and origins of sonic the hedgehog curious like no you don't everybody knows if you're listening to the sonic the hedgehog podcast you probably know a lot about Sonic, right? And for and for my friends who don't know shit about Sonic, I'll just say a couple key words. Make, yeah, uh, make Michael it Jackson, <laughs> Michael Jackson, Santa Claus. No wait, shit. No, Bill Clinton. Sorry, not Michael Jackson. That's later. Bill Clinton, Santa Claus, and um, Teddy Roosevelt. Boom. That's all you need to know for now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, well, Michael Jackson doesn't come till later, buddy. That's um, that's that's a little later, but, but yeah, basically, in the briefest of notes, Sega needed a mascot to compete with Mario, and they made Sonic. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's not why we're here, right? We're here to talk about the end product. Sonic the Hedgehog One. Sonic we're talk. We're here to one. talk. But... I'm sorry for keep cutting you off. My I'm brain sorry. is right I, I cut it, it. It's the nature of a of a Discord podcast is cutting off happens you know well of course so um sonic the hedgehog one which was released from with uh 93 i don't i don't remember i didn't 91 91 19 yeah 1991 (laughs) on the sega genesis i mean come on jeff it's the 30th anniversary (laughs) yeah i don't like i don't like have my notes pulled up right now uh actually my notes for sonic one were very minimal Hey, fellas, you want to know something cool about Sonic 1? Something really, really awesome about it? Too bad. It's poopy and it's... bad and slow. Ugh. Ironically, it's a very slow game. Yeah, but 
we gotta start a green hell zone wonderful of course it's wonderful it's the best part of well yeah it's it's the green hill zone it's the fucking it's one one you know right zone one zone one it's it's one dash one from super mario bros you can't really go much further than that and it's like i know a lot of people like to rag on how sega really just says green hill zone here's green hill zone again here's green hill zone again it's like i get it they reuse that aesthetic probably more times than i would like but it's like i mean how often does nintendo reference the for you know the super mario sprite yeah all right but that's a discussion for another day we could go we could have a whole episode dedicated to sega rehashing you know well that's that's true i mean It'll come up naturally when no, it we get to the later games. No, but regardless, but regard, <laughs> uh, regardless, um, the main thing is Green Hill Zone is nice. It's uh, you know, it's a showcase for the Genesis and its power. You know, the loop de loops are probably the mainstay of it. Saying, hey, you can up momentum, go fast, and see all the parallax scrolling happening and blast processing and all that mumbo jumbo that I have no idea what the fuck it means, but it it's cool, it's nice. Getting rings and stop and you know bouncing on enemies is fun. Inherently, it's fun. Yeah. I would say so personally. Well, Plus, you know, just being in a grassy green plane is just nice in general. I usually I'll boot up Sonic One from time to time just to play like Green Hill. And then when I'm done with Green Hill, I usually put the game away. <laughs> and move on to the next uh, thing. Yeah. Because Green Hill is like, it's a lot of fun. It's a very well put together level. Got lots of paths you can do. Like there's always like, pretty much always more than just the linear path. There's well, always that's... like a higher ground to take. Yeah. Well, that's something we'll get into later on with the series. But the But the main thing I really do like about, you know, the original about sonic level design and this is from the core ga- like from the first game from the first level it's not just a linear straight path to the to the goal there's like at least five different paths you can take and they and they always try to expand upon that with each game granted doesn't always work but they experiment with that because it was always there right but I, um sorry you go no, i was just gonna say like i, I think Green Hill was kind of it feels like that's where most of the care went in in Sonic 1 was Green Hill. Do you think it was probably because, you know, like marketing wise like say we got to have that killer first level. Oh, we yeah. We got to have that Definitely. killer open. Definitely. Um cuz there's a lot and I actually I feel like it's a it's a common trend in Sonic games for the first like the first bit of the game to be like really good and then it just dips it happens surprisingly often with this series you mean the first level is always the best well like yeah pretty much uh but there's a few times where like the first like few levels are like amazing and then it just dips um mainly i'm thinking like very I'm th- well yeah but like it, it happens more than it happens with like mario you know i mean to be yeah true it's like i mean at the very least that that just goes to show hey very few sonic games have bad first levels which hey first impressions are always a good thing but then you know <laughs> that also means most likely you'll be at the peak by right. the time you, by the time you're done with, about a like at most a twentieth of the game, you know, um, we're kind of talking in circles. Basically, the main <laughs> gist is, Green Hill Zone is nice and it's cool. I'm not a big fan of the three act structure, you know, the three zone structure, um, to be exact, but, or. No, wait, I was right. Three, Three acts. Yeah. Per zone. I'm personally yeah, no. I'm personally not the biggest fan of that, but I mean, whatever. That's fine. It it doesn't hamper the experience too much. But then as soon as you get to the next zone with marble zone, mm-hmm. it just nose dives off of a cliff because 
Marvel Zone is it's weirdly labyrinthian where you're going through all these different a very a very strictly linear pathway that's very claustrophobic with no room to like branch out or do whatever maybe you'll get a couple rings if you branch out but that's it you're not going to be able to go fast it's like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my opinion and it seems such like such a weird place to go after something like green hill mm -hmm. and i also feel like the last thing i'll say on green hill because it transitions into something about marvel zone is the music in in sonic one green hill zone is very distinct in in how it, it uses the genesis sound chip it sounds unlike anything else on the sega genesis but then marvel yeah. zone just sounds like a sega genesis song like like i'd hear that in like streets of rage or something not to diss it though, to... because I absolutely like this is a it's kind of it's a hot take definitely, but I prefer. Well, I'm not gonna say it's better because like you know Final Fantasy VI would would prove me wrong, but I I prefer a lot of Genesis soundtracks over Super Nintendo soundtracks. That's and maybe maybe this is just take. this is Actually, this yeah. is definitely a hot take. I do not like the Super Mario World soundtrack. That's a bit off topic, but what the fuck? I, I'm Excuse just saying, me? like, like <laughs> I'm comparing that to, like, like the Sonic soundtrack. I feel like the Sonic soundtrack is, like, very pleasing. Even in, like, it's worst in, in the first game. And so you go from, from Green Hill, which is super, I want to say, like, peppy and, like, energetic. And, like, yeah, get in there. Go, 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 go fast. And then immediately with Labyrinth Zone, you're set into the mood because those first few notes dun, 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 and you're like oh god okay things have taken a turn yeah i mean i'll say this for one thing i personally am not the biggest fan of the sonic one soundtrack just because for me personally it just it all sounds very cold and kind of dour yeah for most of it but i will say it none of them are like mood shifted mm -hmm. at all None of them. None of, none of them have, like, any sort of tonal dissonance, which I really do appreciate. I remember um, the sound director, who was the only... He only worked on that game, weirdly enough. The sound director for that game, I forget his name, but he said how the structure of the game was very much like a film, so he composed it as if it were, like, a film soundtrack with, you know, like, how... and. Uh, you know just how it progresses and how the mood changes and such like that and how it really truly tries to reflect the area mm -hmm. it's not all just, like i guess back to what you're saying about mario world it's not just and this is with pretty much most of the mario games you know outside of like very specific areas it's usually always just a peppy tune and they're constantly reused but every single zone has its own specific tune um Every act has the same tune for each zone, but it's always something different and completely unique. Um, there may be lay, motif, lay motifs here and there, but still, which I do appreciate. But doesn't really change the fact that it just it's just a mood shifter. And it makes me kind of go from, yay, I'm having fun, all the way down to, all right, then. <laughs> all right, then right but um and I, that's the thing is the yeah. first sonic game is its soundtrack is very genesis and i feel like in the in the other games two three and and the cd uh they definitely own in more on that green hill kind of vibe rather than like the labyrinth zone vibe but that's the music talk well labyrinth zone is different labyrinth zone is you know a whole other beast <laughs> That that's the music talk basically, but well, Labyrinth Zone kind of sucks, man. Wait, we wait, we skipped over Spring. Nope. Spring Yard. Labyrinth is no wait. I meant what did I say? Labyrinth. I meant Marble. <laughs> <laughs> marble Zone kind of sucks. Oh well, yeah, I, no, I get it's Marble talk. and Labyrinth so mixed up because like they're basically they're the same. Like the same. They they're the they have the levels. same as. They're the worst levels in the game. They have the, they have relatively the same aesthetic, just different color schemes. One's a water level, one's a lava level. It's like, 
All right. Also, I cannot for the life of me remember the Labyrinth Zone theme. All I can think of is just is just Marble Zone. Right. And that's another thing. <laughs> the Marvels, the like Sonic One music is. I don't know. For me, it's a little forgettable. Like, mm-hmm. even when I try to think back, it's like, yeah, I know Green Hill Zone's tune, but then it's just like, whenever I really try to think back to it, Emerald Hill from from Sonic Two comes uh-huh. in, and I'm just like, the only, oh, okay, then. But the only song I have a hard time remembering is, uh, Labyrinth Zone. I just can't exactly. put my finger on it. But Green Hill, Marble, Spring Yard, uh, Starlight—they all come to me like a scrap brain nail. Like, I know those, like, uh, on God by my heart, but I cannot remember Lap in the Zone for, like, the death of me. I I have no idea what that one sounds like. I just played this game a few days ago, so. I mean, uh, like, to completion? Oh, yeah, I beat, I beat the game. I didn't get all the emeralds, but I beat the game. Fair. I've only beaten the game and gotten the emeralds once, that's, uh, that's both all at you the same need. time. That's all you need. <laughs> Listen, every single time I try to go back to it, I get at least to Spring Yard or Labyrinth, and I just, I can't. I can't mm-hmm. go further. Yeah. Labyrinth, like, Spring like spring Yard boss fight is a little tough for me to, like, that's a little bit of a gatekeep moment. Um. Oh, yeah, just uh, it's on Spring Yard. It's cool. It's fun. I basically, it's, it's neat how it's kind of a precursor to the casino levels before casino levels, you know? Right. Um... I'm just not really a fan of how, well, first off, I'm not a fan of all the spikes everywhere. I'm not a fan of, you know, the springs everywhere and all that stuff. I know it makes sense, but I still find it fairly annoying. I'm not really a fan of the color scheme and a lot of the enemies, especially the blue balls that, you know, come running towards you. Those guys are kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. It's it's mildly annoying, but it's decent in its own right. Um... Also, I'm just not a fan of the color scheme. I find it all to be, like, that kind of weird purpley, like, red that goes throughout the entire thing. I just find it to be a little... Or not purpley, more crimson, but... Again, it just it feels... It's kind of like... Oh, it's a weird aesthetic. Impressive. And I'm not quite sure what it's going for. Because when I see it, I think, like, that's kind of what my grandma's garden looked like. Yeah. With, like, the weird kind <laughs> of fences, the the purplish kind of fences and... Like, I'm not entirely sure what the vibe there is. I guess maybe it's supposed to sort of be, like, the natural world being taken over by buildings and construction and, and shit. I don't know. Well, that's kind of the... Well, to be fair, that is the point That's of the, the theme of the game, and I, I feel like that's kind of what they're going for, but, like... I, don't know. I get it. It's a... It's a... I was actually going to say that the, that the aesthetics of the game itself feel very oppressive once you leave Green Hill Zone. Oh, uh, yeah. And it makes sense. And it makes sense to an extent because it's like, hey, this is, okay, like, basically for you, the guys that don't know, it's an environmentalist game. It really is, and that's kind of just always been a part of Sonic's core character. You move from Green Hill, which is the green fields and grassy plains with basically no machinery whatsoever outside of the enemies um and robotnik um but then as soon as you leave you go into ruins which it's still natural but it's man-made you know it goes from completely natural to more historical yet still man-made and then into completely man-made with with spring yard and then it kind of just keeps running with that it's not like Pollution, like like we said, the labyrinth is its own beast. That's also ruin base based. Um, fun fact: labyrinth zone was actually supposed to be zone two, but <laughs> the, the design... <laughs> yeah, I love that, um... I love that fact because it kind of goes to show like this was their first like because they they had made platformers before, uh, like Alex Kidd. For those of you who don't know, Alex Kidd was like I guess the original Sega mascot. This is terrible. Uh, those games are awful, yeah. and it goes to show like that kind of they philosophy. Are? Oh, Alex Kidd games are so bad, dude. I can't stand them. <laughs> They're so bad. They're awful. We could do a whole episode about just me talking about how awful Alex Kidd and like the only one I played was the the Genesis one. I can't say the whole series because I only played the one on the Genesis. But Alex Kidd on the Genesis is really bad, and Sonic Fair enough. could have easily been another Alex Kidd. I think they played their cards right in shifting Labyrinth Zone to the third fourth to the fourth zone 
Well, it's just, it helps with that difficulty curve. It's still right. stupid because I'm going to be honest, like, everyone always shits on water levels, and I think it's kind of become hyperbolic. It's like, we're not trying to be 2010 screw attack here, but honest to God, <laughs> honest to God, a Labyrinth Zone is probably one of the worst, like, wow. 2D levels I've ever played. Oh, yeah. It, mainly because of the water, mm -hmm. because the Genesis can't fucking handle it. Yeah. It just can't. It's not even that, like, water levels are inherently, like, Sonic water levels are inherently bad, because Sonic 2 and 3 have very fun water levels. Especially 3. God. Especially 3, man. Oof, we can't wait till we get there. <laughs> uh, but but well, Sonic, yeah. Sonic 1, was it was clearly, like, the... Uh, I guess we have to make the water level. And where did... Where did, yeah. Would New, New, but again, Yuji you can't Naka just it's... thought saw hedgehogs can't swim, and he was like, "Let's put, I don't know. Let's put that in the game." I was surely, surely a, a genius. <sighs> I mean, my my thing isn't my thing is not the the fact that hey, he can't swim or breathe underwater, so you have to grab air bubbles. It, that's not well. Mm, it is a horrible <laughs> thing to have in Sonic One. It's fucking terrible, but. I think it's more egregious that they just ran with it throughout the entire series and in most of the other games. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them, it's pretty god-awful. But in most of the other games, it's fine. But in Labyrinth Zone, I think the real issue comes from it takes the Marble Zone aesthetic. It takes the Marble Zone structure of... Because we didn't talk about this, but Spring Yard goes... Even though it's still very kind of like abstracted in its level design and in its curvature and its architecture, it's still, hey, you go from left to right, point A to point B. There's some weird mix up along the way, but there's still alternate paths and, you know, shit to do. Mm -hmm. But with Labyrinth, there isn't. It says, hey, drop you in water. You're going to go up now. You're going to go down. And then you're going to go up and then you're going to go down and then you're going to go up and you're going to ride on slow, small platforms that shoot out spikes. And you're just going to have to pray to God that you don't run out of air or rings. Or get hit by those stupid fireballs that come out of the wall. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That too. So yeah, that Labyrinth too. Zone really is kind of just awful. <laughs> but we've already, but we are. It's like, do. you know. It's just, it's just, it's really bad. Like, and then going back when I, when I played it again recently, I was kind of surprised, like how bad it was. Right? Cause I was like, it has that reputation of being an awful level, but it's really not until you play it for yourself that you, you really understand just like well, everything that could have done wrong. They did wrong. Well, because again, water levels aren't inherently bad. I've even been I've been playing a lot of the Zelda games recently and you know especially the N64 ones people love to shit on Water Temple or Great Bay Temple just be almost just because there are water levels and it's like sure it halts your movement in a lot of regards and there's some annoying factors but it doesn't automatically break it it's uh, there's still a lot of you know good to be a, ra a rose like I can't talk today there's still a lot to be good to be had within those types of levels it's just that when you're in water most of the time it hampers your movement and you know gamers are impatient oh yeah that's some it's you know but again but then there's labyrinth zone which literally just says no this game that we told you you can go fast in that you can have fun in no you're wrong you're not gonna go fast you're not going to have fun. You're going to have to manage your air and your time. And all. oh, yeah, because also didn't mean I uh, forgot to mention it's not the biggest problem, but um, each level has like a 10 minute time limit, but it doesn't actually tell you that it's a 10 minute time limit. Yeah. Which is not again, it's not the worst thing. I've rarely ever run out the time in these kinds of games. It's just another thing to look out for when you're playing these kinds when you're playing you know the shittiest of the levels and it's funny too because like i don't know is it just me or does it seem like they just couldn't be fucked because they didn't even bother with an actual boss fight for the yeah for labyrinth just, zone it's like the worst they just one. said 
Well, yeah, it is the worst just one chase him. because it's you. It's just a chase. It's an upward chase with the water and it constantly sucks. rising. It's awful. It's, it's terrible. Labyrinth zone sucks. But you already Who knew guessed? that. But you already knew that. But you already knew that. And then um, after that, at least it just gets easier with Starlight Zone. Starlight Zone, and you're just like, great, because it's not only like a really fun level, but it's like. You just you're offloaded all that pressure from Labyrinth Zone, and now they're just like, here's a fun level with some loop de loops and some some fun platforming, and that's really all you need. Well, yeah. What I what I like about um, Starlight Zone is, first off, when I first made it there to the game, that was the first when I was like beating it. That was the first time I've ever made it that far. So I was literally just like, sorry, I was literally just like. Dear God, I'm not going to go fast. I'm just going to take my time. <laughs> the only thing I really hate about it are just the um the bomb guys that shoot out that you, you here's the thing. There's these bomb enemies that um will explode if you hit them and if they and if they explode, you lose rings. But also if you leave them be, they'll explode into four little um what you call it? Uh like little four little like fireballs. Things. Yeah, four little fireballs that just, like, go in an arc. Those can also hurt you. There's no way around them. You just have to get past them and make sure you don't get hit. It's annoying as fuck, but it... They put them in there just because. Yeah. I mean, it's a typical Sonic bullshit of putting traps uh, just to say, hey, don't go too fast, which I get it, but it's annoying. It's trial and error gameplay at its finest. Um... But regardless, Starlight Zone is still nice because, one, it has a really nice aesthetic. It's almost like a carnival, yet at night. And it's very calming and relaxing, and I think that's really... It's got that music, uh, though. Oh, the Starlight arguably Zone the music. Best track, arguably the best track in the game. Probably my favorite track in the game just because it's so relaxing and it's so comforting, especially after Labyrinth. It's just like, hey, it's just... It, it waddles me up, and it's... For a game that I've said is so oppressive and so cold, Starlight is the only one, even though it takes place completely at night and it looks like you're in space the entire time, it's the only one that legitimately feels, like, warm. It's just, like, comforting. Even if it is still a decently hard level, but not awful. It's got the little pen it's got the little seesaws with the uh, spikes at the end, and it's reused for the boss fight. Funnily enough, it's kind of the only boss fight in the game that actually reuses something from the level mm -hmm. and i think that's Correct interesting me if i'm wrong yeah no because one of the things i love in video games is when a challenge is presented to you like in a level and then they integrate that later like to a boss fight yeah i love it and and uh, starlight zone is the only one that does that with the seesaws and the boss i don't think any other boss does that so green hill is just the wrecking ball marble zone's just he pops up and shoots. Well, I guess Marble Zone does the platforms on fire, but I don't know. Plat platforms on fire and lava, but I don't. But it's I don't know. It's pretty simple. It's pretty just, just jump over it, you know. Then there's Spring Yard Zone, which I actually actively hate because of just how many hitboxes there are. Oh with yeah, robot. It's you know not not great, but <sighs> scrap brain you zone, know. you know. Scrap brain zone. Oh, we're going into scrap we're going brain into zone scrap now. Scrap brain zone now because the final. I'll level. be honest. I don't. Yeah, go right ahead. Except when it does, you know what? For the third act, I actually don't mind scrap brain zone <laughs> too much. I think it's. I think it's appropriately difficult, and it's not like just suddenly slapping you in the face with challenge like labyrinth zone. I was able to get through it on my first run. So I don't think it's that I don't I really don't think it's that hard, which because for as much as I like to hamper on, you should be able to want to go fast. When you get to the final level of the game and you have like three lives left and there's no saves or continues, you're like, OK, I'm just going to take my time with this. And it does and it. It'll treat you right if you do that, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't just rush in head first. Um. I mean, that's another point of contention that I have with the game and Sonic 2. The fact that you can't save, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. Um, but it basically, but my main, but the main thing is just like Scrap Brain Zone, 
we were talking about earlier how Sonic is an environmentalist game, mm-hmm. and that's how we started off, and that's how it's always been. Mm-hmm. And it really goes to show that in Scrap Brain Zone, where, again, you go from grassy fields, man-made ruins, um, fun casino level, fun casino slash carnival level, then back to ruins, but then, like, you know, fun carnival, and then oppressive, you know, like, factory on fire. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's 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 a natural progression of like actually of industrialization, and saying, "Hey, look at how fucked Robotnik made this world now. Look at how fucked he made it. Right. So we just we gotta save him. We gotta save the animal buddies. <laughs> gotta save um, what is it? South Island. Yeah, I think so. Gotta save South Island. Gotta save South Island. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I do like the aesthetics a lot. I like the music a lot. I mean, it's just naturally, it's appropriate for it. I think the challenge is appropriate for it being the final level. The only thing is, um, elephants in the room, they throw a labyrinth zone at you. Yeah. Again! It's the third for the f- act of Scrap Brain. The third... It's just labyrinth zone again. But this time it's in black and white with purple water. And I, I don't understand what compelled them to do that. Maybe disk space... But I really don't understand why they chose Labyrinth Zone. Maybe maybe because they were like, this is the only one that's actually difficult. But, like, I would have just... I, w- I would have rather them just say, okay, Scrap Brain Zone is just two, you know? Yeah. It's just two yeah. acts oh, instead of man. saying... Especially since the final the boss again. is, like, considered its own zone. Final well, zone. Well, yeah, no. Final zone. I mean, I get it kind of like i mean they they do that with all the other ones but like oh it's man just... if it wasn't for that shortcut in scrap brain act 3 i would absolutely dread it <laughs> like even uh, more so see? than i already do uh you see i didn't know about the shortcut when <laughs> i did my run through so for those of you who don't know there is a shortcut in like the very beginning of the stage that you have to get before like a wall moves in front of it and you're blocked off from it if you get that shortcut the level is like more than cut in half in how long you have to go through it and it's amazing it's only like it's only like like 20 seconds yeah pretty much it's a get out of here it's actually pretty honestly it's pretty hard to miss if you're playing it so like keep a lookout if you don't know about it uh i'm sure you'll find it Mm Hmm. yeah Uh, or just look it up right just just look it up just look it up man yes New dis- gen- <laughs> but, um, generation of gamers is all game facts and look Wikipedia it. and I watched a Markiplier let's play of my game to know how to get through it you know shit like that you see back in my back in my <laughs> Jeff's days we had to go onto the school bus and talk to other kids and say hey how did you do this or <laughs> no. hey, hey I'm having trouble here I only had one friend in school who liked Sonic <laughs> I'm talking about more in general, in and general, also only when I, I, mean, I when only, I was, only when I and also. Oh, sorry. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would like write down. I'd find cheat codes, like from those cheat code books, like, and I'd I'd write them down oh, on, yeah. on like a piece of paper and stick it in the game case. So if I ever opened the game to play it, I'd be like, "There's all my cheats I need to play the game." The Sonic games don't have oh, cheats. God. They don't. So that was nothing. <laughs> But, I'm trying to. Yeah, no, none of them have like actual cheats, which is fucked up. There's like I the, got cheat code like dev mode, but it's like that's not it's not the same. Yeah, the debug, right? Debug, yeah. Who cares about debug mode? I don't care about debug mode. I know it's a staple for these games, but I don't care about them personally. Um, but regardless, I just make it a funny. I. I didn't ask people for, you know, oh, how'd you beat this either? Because I had the internet when I was young. I'm only 21. It's like, yeah, I'm about as young as most of you guys. The only thing, the only different thing is that when I was five, my brother would tell me, no, you idiot, go this way, not that way. And I'm like, oh, okay then. And this is for like basically every game. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, Regardless. Regardless. Um... Final. Oh yeah, that's just Sonic One. Well, it's like what? Oh yeah, Final Zone. 
Like honestly, not too hard of a boss fight. It's not too hard of a boss fight. I would also I would just like it's it's a pretty pretty un, like underwhelming finale to end it off on. Don't get hit by the platforms. Hit Eggman. It really dodge the electricity. <laughs> It's very easy because you could just kind of stay to the side, oh, jump, yeah. and then he just he'll just get to you. Because the thing is, I could understand that if it was like ball bustingly hard, if you didn't have those like edges to stand on on the on the sides. Because there's you know he has four different ways of coming at you: two from above, two from the ground, and they're both in their own separate and they're all in their own separate sections. But then there's like little slivers on the side. And yeah. it's like, I get that it's telling you, hey, don't just stand in one place. Otherwise, the electricity will get you. But it's very easy to dodge because they're very slow. And just, it's fine. I wouldn't call it underwhelming because in all honesty, you can't really underwhelm me when the game itself isn't good. Um, but uh, outside of that, it's just fine. It's I I'm all right on it. Honestly, I prefer that level of difficulty of just situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because um, big thing, and they do this for the next game, too. Uh, you don't get any rings for the final boss. It just says, no, no, fi no more rings. You have to do this in one go, which isn't the worst thing. It isn't the worst thing, necessarily, as at least in this one. Later on, it gets a little annoying, but that's besides the point. What I do like about it, though, is the fact that, again, situ it's situational awareness rather than trial and error pattern recognition with mm -hmm. no room for error. Yeah. That's my take on it, at least. I mean, that's pretty much what it is, yeah. There's one more Sonic stage. One. Well, there's one more what? stage we're forgetting about. What are you talking about? There's like six more stages we have to talk about. Uh, you could uh, say they're a little special. Oh, you, fu <laughs> you fucker! <laughs> I was like, I was like, are you actually gonna say the special stages and be a dick, or are you actually gaslighting me? No, I would. I don't. I used to gaslight my friends really badly, like as a joke, but it's awful. I stopped doing that. Fair but, like, no, we, <laughs> fair enough. It's fine. It's fine. There's one thing to say about the special stages. Uh, there was an attempt. You know, they they tried. <laughs> you know, it's just hey hey. It's, it's so like not fun, but and and can we, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant really quick. The yeah, go the, ahead. the yellow the, the the red dots that say goal are actually the things that kick you out of the stage. What is up with that? Because they say I mean, goal. Wait, you say they're yellow? They're like No, no, they're blue, red. Right? They're red. I said yellow at first and I corrected myself. They're red. Oh, okay. Were the red dots yeah. that say goal kick you out of the special stage? I mean, I don't know. I never really had a tr had trouble with that because I just saw uh, oh Blinking red dead end. Yes, I don't want to go that's there. That's fair, but when I was five, I was just figuring out what words meant, and I'm like, goal means good. I should go there. And then I get kicked out, <laughs> assuming that I had won. <laughs> and then I beat the game, fair. and it was like, too bad. And I was like, what? What? To be, to be, to be fair, you don't need the cast emeralds. You don't. You it, really it's, don't. It's, you know, they thankfully you know i'd say sonic 2 and then 3 you you definitely want to try to get them uh because they i didn't Tune in. Have... what sorry i was just gonna say tune in to the next episode to hear me rant about sonic oh, 2's boy pages. yeah yeah Fucking but um i mean listen listen sonic uh sonic 1 special stages are like you said they're not fun they made an attempt but they're not the worst on the genesis they aren't I would. They're you know, not. They're fine. They're okay, but it's I guess it's, it's easy enough to get through, and I can understand the physics of it to an extent where I can say, "Fine," and it's forgiving enough because the thing is, you just grab fifty rings and get to the end of the level. It's like that's not that's not really that big of a challenge, and the the special stages themselves aren't as much of a challenge anyway. So it's just like right. whatever. And I like, get it. It's cool. Your reward is literally just the cut, the ending cutscene is slightly 
altered. Oh yeah, no, you're you're uh, you're it's it's the equivalent of the Super Mario Sunshine where it's literally just like oh no, okay, no, the no, image no. is different. No, because Mario Sunshine I would say is worse. <laughs> with, yeah, with true. It, w- with, this isn't the Paisano podcast, so we're not gonna talk about that. But um, Sonic One, it's the exact same ending cutscene, only there's like f- bigger flowers in the back. Yeah, <laughs> and you well, don't there's flowers, and you don't have Eggman juggling all the emeralds, saying "Too bad." <laughs> Well, yeah. The thing about it is just, um... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreement. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just kind of... It, that's how it is. I'm just glad that, the, that you don't need them. And uh, it gets progressively kind of worse as it goes on because it's like, hey, even if the special stages are more interesting later on, you need them as you go forward. Which mm-hmm. I find frustrating, but whatever. It's cool, I guess. Yeah, um Yeah, so that's that's Sonic One, actually for this time. Like that's 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 really it. It was That's it. It was kind of a hit, you know, maybe maybe just a bit of like a, a success. You know, I think it did kinda well. Um to be clear, if it if it's if it any hmm. if at any time it seemed as though we were kinda like some over over yourself over ourselves Let me think before I talk. If at any time it seemed like we were stumbling over ourselves or if we were talking in circles or kind of, you know, like stumbling over what to say, that's because this episode is actually a re-recording of a previous episode that we had done. Mm-hmm. Audio issues and, you know, other technical blah, blah, technical. blahs aside. Technical blah, blah, blah. Just yeah. so regardless, I, I figured, we re-recorded this episode. Because we recorded the second episode and it came out really good. And then I went back to the first episode and I thought this is not up to snuff so we're this is the redo which is why it may seem a little scattered uh and maybe not as concise as you were hoping but in general i mean but the main oh sorry no i'm sorry you go okay (laughs) um but i was just (laughs) this is your channel i'm i'm always trying to be like you're the real host here. no no we're both the hosts it's just on my channel fair enough um the main thing is just if it seems that way, that's because we've already talked at length about how we feel about Sonic 1, so we're kind of, like, trying to get through this and be as concise as possible. Um, and I just remember we talked about... Listen, in terms of, like, the entire series and just being a game on its own, it's not good. I personally don't have fun with most of it. Jeff, I assume you, you feel the same way. I mean, yeah. However... Oh, sorry. No, I'm I'm agreeing with you, yeah. But, however, first off, it's a good introduction. For the time, it was a good introduction of a character and of a world. It was great on those aspects to say, hey, even if this first one isn't all that great, it's still, like, we can still go forward with it. And that's what they did, and they made some real. They made some actual bangers later on. Oh yeah, as you can probably see, be, because of our obsession with the with the franchise. But outside of that, we were also talking about how okay, it's not exactly the most fair comparison, but let's take the first Sonic game and the first Mario game if they're really trying to be competitors. I'll take Sonic any day over Super Mario Bros. One. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're you're totally right on that. Not even on a technical basis. I just think I, I just think it smokes Mario One on most aspects. The only thing is just that I guess level consistency, but. But Mario sucks. Even then... There's only like three kinds of levels, and it's just they repeat <laughs> that like constantly, and it's like only one of them is actually kind of fun. So. Well, exact. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like, and then it it has a shit final level. Yeah. Oh, anyway, <laughs> this is not the Paisano podcast. No, I know. But... I'm just saying, like, you know, if we're going just off of the comparisons because that's what they wanted, even though at the time Mario World was out, and we all know that Mario World is one of the greatest. Did Mario World come out ever? before Sonic One. Yes, it did. Yeah? I believe, okay, or at right, least well... it was around the same well, yeah. time. Mario World smokes Sonic One out of the water. 100%. I would but I would actually change. say I don't I don't think there was a Sonic game that could compare to Mario World until Sonic 3. But that's just me. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but Yeah. But but basically 
the gist of it is not a great not a great game, but a good start. A good head start to say, hey, we're going to compete. We're going to throw our hat in the ring. We're going to see what's going to happen. And uh, thankfully, with Sonic 2, they decided, let's actually, let's not fuck this up. Let's actually take the good stuff about this and really just amp it up. Let's yeah. let's take, hey, I, I guess we'll talk. You'll hear that later on in the episode two, yeah. the Sonic 2 episode of the podcast. Mm -hmm. But Sonic 2 is better. Yeah. Sonic 2 is better. Which you can say about most sequels to platformers, but I feel like Honestly. Sonic 1 exists. I'm glad it exists. And I'm probably... Stop re-releasing it, Sega. You can buy it like five <laughs> different times on the same console. If you have a device where you can control moving images, you can probably play Sonic 1 on it. I had a Sonic 1 on my old Motorola flip phone. And it was like... Can a, I read it? I'm not... It's like a butchered port. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm i on the uh, Sonic Wiki. Can I just read off every single platform that <laughs> Sonic oh. 1 is released for? <laughs> Go ahead. All right. This is, by the way, European, so some of the names may be a little changed. Sega Mega Drive, Android, iOS devices, Microsoft Windows, Wii Virtual Console, Game Boy Advance, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, PlayStation Portable, Play Sega, Nintendo 3DS eShop, and Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Yeah, it's it's on it's on a lot. Oh, and oh, and by the way, oh, but and it's funny because the iPhone Android, like the phone version of the game is the best version because of Christian because of one beautiful man by the name of Christian mm -hmm. Whitehead yeah. who just, who was contracted by Sega to say, "Hey, let's take Sonic 1 and 2 and remaster them from the ground up, make them widescreen, you know, new like new quality of life features Features. Some of them even had added zones. Sonic One, I believe, added the spin dash and other playable characters. It's like these are the definitive ways to play the first two oh, games. Yeah. However, they're only on phones. Yeah, they're f which is sucks. It's probably some kind of contractual thing. Like they contracted it like only for mobile devices because they have they have M2 doing the ports for like collections and and stuff. And M2s they're great at, at straight up porting. Well, yeah, of course. And, and that's what they mostly do with Sonic 1 on consoles because it's usually a part of, like, a collection. And you can't have, you know, the Christian Whitehead Sonic and a Sega Genesis collection like that because the whole point of the Sega Genesis collection is to be as accurate, like, as possible. Uh, so just make the Christian Whitehead Sonic collection. Let him do three and just make, make all four of the games. Put them on, like, a big... I'll buy a physical copy of it if you put all four... All four of the Sonic games. But Jeff. Yeah. That would require them to acknowledge Sonic 3. It's tricky. <laughs> I can't do that. We'll get we'll into get that, that later. Later. We'll get into that. But um basically the main the main gist is if you want to play the Sonic game the Sonic one for any reason, just historical purposes, or just thinking, eh, what harm could be done? Just get it on your phone. It's free with ads uh, and like two bucks without ads. And you can you can probably hook up some kind of Bluetooth controller to your phone. Or you can use exactly. Blue Stacks to emulate Android on your computer. That's what a lot of people do. Um, and also recently, um there's been a how do you say it? like a would it be like a ROM hack or a mod? A, uh, um, it looks like a dump. Of uh, the dump? game, it was like a, like a they like they dumped the game on PC. They did. I personally haven't been able to try it out myself just because I'm not super tech savvy with that kind of stuff. But from what I've seen, it seems like it's just the Christian Whitehead versions on Steam, or or not on Steam, like on PC, just like everyone wanted. So, right. you know, go if you can, go for that. So, that's, that's Sonic Hedgehog 1? Sonic. 
that's fast cast episode one uh fast cast episode one take two this one i hope you guys it seems kind of short it seems kind of short after i edit this it's going to be kind of short but let me assure you that these will not all be short we'll we'll get in we'll get into the long ones later we'll get into the long ones later it's just when you talk about the 2d games there's not a whole lot to talk about talk about sonic the hedgehog's 3d games there are naturally a lot of things to say so the future episodes will be longer well of course i can't wait for the um well i didn't i didn't want to tease that right away yeah i'll censor that i'll censor that the bleep oh no just too late i've already bleep editor jeff censor that and we'll keep it Um, a secret i was just gonna say i'm excited for 06 because that's probably gonna be three hours of us just trying to make sense of it 06 is gonna be great because i like 06 so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun i have not played it in a while (laughs) and i don't know if i like it i think it's I think it's shit, but oh, it's I but garbage, I have fondness, you know. But I have fondness for it. Yeah, we'll get to I that. When, a... We'll get there when we get there. We'll get there when we get there. Okay. Uh, for now, it's been fast cast. It's been fast cast. I'm Mike. I'm Jeff. I hope you guys had a great time. Yes. I hope you guys had a great time listening uh, listening to us ramble about Sonic the Hedgehog. It's not over yet, because... ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's only just we're, we're doing them all. Uh, every single one except for some of them you don't get to find out which ones <laughs> just whichever ones we don't feel like talking about yeah yeah we'll Oof. do most of them though don't worry yep sorry yep. but um uh your favorite sonic game probably won't be sorry talked about i'm sorry, sorry. we will not be talking about knuckles chaotix it's not a sonic game <laughs> well by that logic why are we talking why would we be talking about the tales games oh because or shadow okay now you're being <laughs> I'm being the dick here. Uh, uh, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> the real reason we can't talk about Knuckles Chaotix is because I have no idea how the fuck to emulate it. or yeah. to, And I'm not paying, you know, $1,000 to get a Genesis and a 32X. Right. Fuck that nonsense. No. It, uh, it looks fine. And it's not very fine, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Maybe we'll get there. Maybe. Uh, but anyway. Oh, whatever. Thank you guys so much for listening. And Thank you. We'll see you in the next one where we talk about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye.